The opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Cable 14, its sponsors or its shareholders, Kojiko Cable, Shaw Cable and Source Cable Limited. Welcome to the November 22nd edition of Hamilton Talks. I am Larry Diani, and Hamilton Talks is a community affairs program that talks with prominent Hamiltonians and sometimes Hamiltonians who are not as well known but are also moving the community forward. Tonight we are in discussion with Mr. P.J. Mercanti. P.J. is the president of the Carmen's Group, a name synonymous with celebrity events weddings, catering, and dinner theater. His family, also known and operate, the Best Western Premier Sea Hotel, the Bachi Ristorante, and the Lakeview at Confederation Park. A University of Notre Dame business grad, PJ worked for ESPN before venturing back to Hamilton, and he has kept himself busy ever since. He's the founder of Gen Next United Way and is involved with many community organizations such as the Charity of Hope, the Good Shepherd, City Kids, Hamilton Health Sciences, and the Community Foundation. Over the past few years, PJ has organized events featuring Academy Award winners and Hollywood icons like Al Pacino, Michael Douglas, and Sylvester Stallone, as well as Sarah Palin. And just the other night, Olivia Newton-John was a guest of his as well. And we welcome PJ Mercanti to our program. Thanks, Larry. PJ, uh, you're a Hamiltonian who's had many experiences. You're a young man. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we like doing on this program is finding out about your early years in Hamilton. Sure. What are some of your memories? Where did you go to school, for example? I, I went to elementary school at St. Vincent de Paul on the West Mountain and then was at St. Thomas More High School during my, during my uh, adolescent years and had a great time there. I was involved with different sports teams and and on student council and so so my experiences at St. Vincent and at Thomas More really opened my eyes to the community and to the great things that make Hamilton vibrant. Well and in fact uh, your sports uh, involvement in high school led to uh, education at Notre Dame, legendary Notre Dame University in the United States in Grand Bend, mm -hmm. Indiana. What was that like? It was amazing. It was a great experience. I actually saw the movie Rudy and then I thought about applying there. I had nothing to lose so I, it was the only American school that I had applied to. I was considering, strongly considering going to McMaster but the, the opportunity came up and it was a wonderful experience. I got to meet people from all over the world and it had a very rigorous business program that I participated in. Their undergraduate business program was amongst one of the best in the United States and so I was very proud of, of that and, and had a wonderful, wonderful experience, worked hard, had some fun, got to go to a lot of the football games there as well. And, uh, and the and tailgate it, parties, I'm sure. There were a few of those, there were a few of those, uh, early mornings, late nights. And, uh, and it was a, a great experience for me that, uh, that helped me to, to see the potential that can be achieved when you work hard. So you were in the business program, you got a degree in business. Uh, and then somehow um, the sporting bug also hit you because you got a job with ESPN. And what were you doing for them? I was, I started off as a production assistant and I should actually preface that by, by mentioning that I got a minor in film and television. So I had a foot in the business world, a foot in the entertainment world. And, uh, and so at, uh, at ESPN I started as a production assistant and I was uh, doing all of the, the menial work that a production assistant would typically do. And partway through my, my, uh, my job with them, they promoted me to that of an associate producer. So I was more involved with interviewing players and coaches uh, and picking the segments and, and the clips that would appear on TV. And, uh, and so it was a wonderful experience. I was there for six months and I uh, got to meet a lot of great people and they, they kept the doors open for me. But obviously my, my path rerouted me back home to Hamilton and I've been loving it ever since. And so was that your decision or did dad take you aside and say, PJ, N no, you know, it there's was, a family business here to nurture? Well, when I graduated, I had two months 
back here in Hamilton before my before my job started at ESPN. And during those two months, I got to spend some time with my family, got to see some of the events happening at Carmen's over the weekend. And I realized the Ham I got caught by the Hamilton bug, and and I realized kind of how special it was. And it wasn't until two of my friends from Notre Dame came up to Hamilton and one was from Chicago the other from Pittsburgh and they had a blast they couldn't believe how beautiful Hamilton was and you know we were close to Niagara Falls close to Toronto so we did a day in in each city spent some time in in Hamilton and uh, and they were blown away by Hamilton and that's when I realized that there was something special about Hamilton but I guess the turning point came when I was the, it was the day that I was officially uh, announced that I was an associate producer and I was in the in the US and, and in, a, in a bar that night and I wasn't able to share that experience with my family with my you know the people that, are, that were closest to me and so I realized that that even though the ESPN opportunity was was a dream job I knew that there was a dream life waiting for me in Hamilton that that there were special things happening in the city that Carmen's was ripe for for growth and so so that's what pulled me back into Hamilton and of course, it's not just you working at Carmen's and your dad, uh, of course, uh, your brother's also involved in that, so it really is a, a it's, family it's affair. It's a true family affair, and my mother is there <laughs> giving us heck and making sure that we do things her way as well. So she's, she's, the, she she's, plays, the boss. she's the boss. Come on. She's the queen bee, <laughs> and if my father, brother, and I don't listen to her, we're in trouble. <laughs> and, uh, and, but she brings a lot of uh, credibility to the business. She's great with, uh, with HR, with interviewing people. Uh, she's great with decor, a lot of those decor elements. It's not myself or my father, it's my mother. And so she plays an active role in the business as well. And, and Joey's been an awesome, awesome partner uh, with, with the growth and expansion of the business. And my sister Danielle is even, even dabbles with the uh, business as well. So well, she, she gets, it's a full family affair. Well, let's talk about that a little bit because beginning with, with your grandfather and your uncles as well, or at least uh, uh, your great uncles, mm -hmm. um, and and uh, your dad and his brothers, mm -hmm. your uncles. I mean, the Mercanti family has been, really made a name for itself in hospitality and other businesses as well. Mm -hmm. Your uncle Sam with with his car uh, uh, car star uh, franchise and so on. So it's been very successful family. But that, as well as providing some benefits, obviously, that you're walking in uh, to a business that's thriving, has got to be adding pressure to the next generation of Mercantis as well, or not. Talk about that. We've been blessed, my, my brother, myself, uh, my, my, my cousins, I think we've been blessed with the fact that the family has deep roots in the community. And, and my father didn't force my brother or I to, to get into the business. He, he let us go off on our own, and it just so happened that the magnetism in Hamilton brought us back and, um, and, and made us get involved. And so, I think that the the foundation that my uncles, my grandparents laid uh, have helped us in a big way and uh, you know we wouldn't have had the op I wouldn't have had the opportunities that I that I have if it wasn't for the hard work of my father and my uncles and the one thing that they've done is um, is set the set the the model for us to follow they've been hard workers all their lives when they came from Italy they were told by the by the uh, mercantis that had already immigrated that if you want to work hard there are amazing opportunities for you if you don't want to work hard stay in Italy and so so I think that they have given my brother and I something to strive towards that work ethic we've adopted it through observing them and and the way that they've been with people we've been blessed to observe that all of our lives and so getting involved in the community and and being active came naturally to us we we saw it through my father and my uncles they were always engaged in rotary with numerous charitable initiatives so it just was like second nature for us to get involved in community initiatives and to work hard i think it's it's up to our generation to honor the legacy of generations past and and to take the city to the next level and so I'm blessed and I think it's been a been a great uh, great opportunity to to work with my family and to, to expand what they've started and it's been nice uh, to see and by the way your your family your pair your dad and brothers came to this country in 1956 Absolutely. which is the same year my family came from uh, the same part of Italy in central Italy in the Abruzzi region Abruzzi, yeah. and it's great to see uh, people in the business world 
make a name for themselves and, and earn the success that they've had, and also some recognition. I was very proud to see that your Uncle Sam received the Sons of Italy Man of the Year Award, and that all three brothers, mm -hmm. uh, Sam and your dad and uh, your Uncle Morris, uh, also received and were recognized as distinguished citizens of Hamilton, one of the highest honors that the community can give. That's got to make you proud. Oh, absolutely. And it was a special night for the Mercanti family when, when my Uncle Morris, my Uncle Sam, and my father were inducted. And, I mean, they've worked their whole lives and, and dedicated everything to the city of Hamilton, to making Hamilton better, to putting Hamilton on the map. I mean, my Uncle Sam with CarStar, their head office is situated right here in Hamilton, and they have 170 CarStar auto body repair franchises across the country. My Uncle Morris with what he's done with Edge Hospitality and, and with Carmen's. So, so there is a lot, of, a lot of great works that they've done. And, and I mean, if you see my father and, and my uncles, they still have a lot of energy. So I'm sure there's a lot more to come. <laughs> well, they do that. Well, yeah. let's talk about some of the enterprises that you're involved sure. in. And, uh, of course, Carmen's everybody knows. I don't think there's anybody in the city mm -hmm. that hasn't been to at least a function up at Carmen's, one of the premier banquet halls. And we have a number of them in the city, but mm -hmm. certainly one of the premier. You'd probably say the premier, but let's give others we, a bit we of know a... We have the utmost respect for our friends at, uh, at Leuna and Michelangelo's. They do wonderful Excellent. work, and we work well with them, too. Excellent. Yeah. But you have also deepened your involvement where uh, Carmen's is by building a hotel. Hotels are risky ventures. Mm -hmm. What motivated you folks to think that you could make a go of it? Uh, it, it's actually quite, uh, it was a quite simple process. We had a strategic retreat and our receptionist was saying that, you know, she gets bogged down with, uh, you know, with, with answering questions and, and we asked, well, what kind of questions do you get asked? Well, she says, oh, at least 10, 20 times a week people will call asking where the nearest hotel is. So you figure, okay, 10, 20 a week, so that means a thousand times a year people are calling us asking us where the nearest hotel is. So a light went off. And, you know, we realized that, that there was an opportunity. Uh, the Red Hill Valley had just opened, and with that came a flood of new business from Burlington, Oakville, Mississauga, St. Catharines, Niagara. And so people were starting to book w uh, weddings at Carmen's and naturally needing hotel space. So what we did is we conducted a feasibility analysis from PKF Consulting, and they determined that a hotel would work right beside our, our facility. And, and then I wrote the business plan, and a year later we secured the financing. A year after that we started construction, and, and we've been blessed ever since then. The hotel has been, been doing extremely well. We're ranked number one on TripAdvisor in Hamilton. There's people from all over the world that visit the hotel due to weddings, corporate, uh, corporate events that they're attending, uh, visiting companies that are in the Hamilton area. And so the hotel was, it was, it was a risk, but a calculated risk. You know, we, we did our homework, we did our due diligence, and the uh, results showed it would be successful. So as long as we executed the game plan, we knew we would be successful, and we've been blessed that it has been. Listen, business means risk. And as the saying goes, uh, if you don't risk, you don't gain. Exactly. And so it's, it's great to see that the opportunity has uh, uh, presented itself and you've taken advantage of it. And yes, the Red Hill Expressway, I know a little bit about that project, <laughs> I knew would open up business opportunities for the city and Absolutely. they are also taking effect as well. Well, recently you, your family has also been awarded mm -hmm. the management of HECFI. Absolutely. Um, I don't know whether the final negotiations have ended in that, but I think you take over in the new year, do yes, you not? Yes, absolutely. So tell us about that process. Why did you decide to go into competition with yourself, essentially, uh, at another location, at a downtown location? What's the business case that convinced you that that could be good for the city as well as the family business? For sure. Uh, I think uh, backing up and just looking at the HECFI scenario as a taxpayer, it was frustrating that so many uh, taxpayer dollars were going towards subsidizing the HECFI facilities. And as a property tax payer at Carmen's, we were frustrated that we were essentially in competition with our own city. And you know, we, we thought it wasn't fair that, that their operation had been subsidized and that there was no true incentive for them to run as efficiently as they could, they could have. So from a taxpayer's perspective, there, there, you know, there, was a great, there were great savings available and, and we were happy to participate in that process. And, uh, and 
when, when the RFPs came out, we were more than delighted to participate in it because we know that Hamilton is ripe for growth, that there is a magical momentum taking place in Hamilton. And, and as experts in running event, uh, event facilities, convention facilities, we knew that there were um, efficiencies to be realized there, and we know that the potential of the convention center, if packaged properly, could be tremendous. That, that there are events taking place right now in, in Burlington, in Oakville, in Brantford, Mississauga, that should be in Hamilton. And so we want to aggressively pursue those events, bring them to Hamilton, and, and, and we are proud Hamiltonians, and I think that is, you know, that's very clear for those that know our family. So we want Hamilton to win. No disrespect to our friends in Burlington and Oakville, and we have many friends and business associates in those cities, but I want Hamilton to win. My father and my family wants Hamilton to win. And so we know that the convention center could be a catalyst, one of the many catalysts in helping Hamilton to win on a greater level, on a greater scale. So we were delighted to have the opportunity to bid on that RFP. We are going to save taxpayers right off the bat $1 million per year through efficiently operating the convention center. And, uh, and we know that we can make the convention center a point of pride again for the city of Hamilton. So, which is great, by the way, just the $1 million savings. If Absolutely. nothing else happens, that is, uh, you know, a, a, a huge benefit to the city. Uh, but I, I like what I'm hearing in terms of it being a jewel within the downtown area mm -hmm. as well. So what, what are, will we see that's different? when you take over? Well, immediately we are going to invest close to a half a million dollars up front that, that will be our money that we're putting into the facility. So general things outside of the convention center, exterior uplighting, signage. So a few visual things. As soon as you get into the lobby, we're going to freshen it up, give it a nice, fresh, clean look. We've, we've subcontracted event designers and, um, and creative professionals to assist us with that. Again, my father and I are good businessmen, but creatively, you know, the, uh, you the hire professionals, the right we hire the right people. Right. And then over and above that, we are going to make a significant investment in new decor. Chair covers, charger plates, table linens, because those types of things, if they are included in packages that events customers can purchase, it makes the saleability of the venue that much, uh, that much greater. It makes selling events that much easier. And so we are going to make that initial upfront investment that hopefully over the course of the contract will pay itself off in dividends. Excellent. And uh, of course, there's also talk about a hotel presence that you've committed to in the core. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about sure. that? Sure. I mean, we, we know that the convention center, uh, the convention business and events that hotels are a natural natural um, expansion opportunity in the same way that we experienced that with our facility at Carmen's that the hotel helped to drive more events at Carmen's and that the events at Carmen's helped to fill the hotel so we know that that same model can be replicated downtown at the convention center and that that there is opportunity for Hamilton to to get more um, business if there are more hotel rooms one of the one of the crippling elements that has held this city back and that has held the convention business back has been the lack of hotel rooms in Hamilton. We desperately need more hotel rooms for the city to compete with the Londons of the world and the Ottawa's. We need to, you know, people say that we shouldn't be competing and, and, and you know, comparing ourselves to those big cities, but I say, why not? What makes Hamilton any less than those big cities? And so I say that we need to equip this city and build the infrastructure necessary for this city to compete with the best of Canada and and so that vision that we have which which you know we've we've done a lot of homework on we have reports that we've been generating from the industry consultants that that have the expertise to determine the appropriate feasibility of size and scope so we're doing that homework right now we have talked to numerous financing partners and so we've done a lot of homework to help to make that dream come to life and of course, part of the buzz in the community is around a casino, because OLG, as we know, uh, is looking for urban centers mm -hmm. to to perhaps uh, relocate casinos to. And uh, you, I don't think your family has made it a secret that you'd be interested. You don't have to divulge uh, any proprietary interest mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, but are you? And what are you doing about it? Uh, 
So to, to comment on that, I just want to first uh, make mention that in the initial HECFI RFP that we submitted, lo long before OLG announced any modernization plans, in our initial RFP that we submitted to the city, we made mention of building a hotel downtown. So we had expressed our commitment to that right before anything else happened. It was clear in the submission we provided to KPMG that yes, as part of their HECFI bid, the Mercanti Group, the Carmen's Group, is looking at building a hotel. Second to that, we, uh, we want to make it, uh, make it known that, that we are not gaming operators. We cannot uh, run a casino, be awarded a license. Um, but, but it, it, you know, so that, that aside, we, we think that it's important for the city to analyze the pros and cons of, of a gaming facility. I mean, Hamilton right now is in the gaming business. Flamborough Downs is a casino, um, a gaming facility. And so I think it's important for Hamiltonians to consider what positives there could be, what are the economic merits and social merits that could be achieved and realized if, if we maximize the OLG gaming opportunity. So is, are there more jobs that can be created? Is there more tourism that can be generated? Is there, are there more conventions and attractions and events that could come to Hamilton if a gaming facility is, is put into a different part of the city? So these are important things that, that council, that the community at large should consider and, um, and I think that, that there are a lot of benefits that, that gaming facilities do bring to, to communities. I mean, there's cities like Calgary and Montreal and Vancouver that have gaming facilities. Uh, many of them have them closer to the general population base. And all of those cities are world-class cities that have hosted Olympic Games and are cultural centers. So I think that, uh, that it's... That it's um, so the casino could coexist with other absolutely, activities. Absolutely. And, and there are some social issues. We're running out of time. Sure. There are some social issues, but they can be mitigated. But you're firmly convinced that it needs to be studied at the very absolutely. least. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Listen, we're, we are running out of time, and we haven't talked about the great philanthropy that your family does. By, by inviting world-class individuals, actors and politicians uh, to the city mm -hmm. and, uh, and making some money for charity. Very quickly, tell us a little bit about that. You know what, it was started back when the Morgan Firestone Foundation and my father brought in Bill Clinton, George Bush, Sophia Loren. And, I was and at all of those. A couple of years ago, I think it was Michael Douglas was the first time we brought somebody else big back in. And ever since then, you know, we've, we've helped to bring in Al Pacino, Sylvester Stallone most recently with Olivia Newton-John. And, and these events are fantastic for many reasons. One, they introduced these celebrities to Hamilton where we could show them the great things about our city. Secondly, they raise funds for charities like um, like City Kids, like the Jervinsky Cancer Center, and uh, the Good Shepherd Center. So they're great to give the charity greater awareness and and financial resources. And they and and lastly, they bring a lot of buzz and excitement to the city. You know, when else will you be able to see uh, Al Pacino or or Rocky himself in or Hamilton? Or Sarah Palin. Or Sarah Palin. Absolutely. We had people come from from Florida from Montreal, from Boston, to come see Sarah Palin. I was there. And we had, uh, I bet, yeah, we had about 50 media, different media outlets attend the event as well. Yeah. So, so these events do bring buzz. They bring excitement. So they're a win-win-win from every way you look at it. But the most important thing is that they raise money for important causes in Hamilton. That money stays in Hamilton. And so we're very proud of the, of the financial contributions so that these charities So out of make. all of those, one quick notable story that you want to share with our audience. Oh, wow. Um, Al Pacino was was a pleasure, but an interesting thing before he came out onto the uh, onto the stage area, I was with some of the other event co-chairs. He did five spins in a row, went back in his room, came back out, clapped his hands, and said, "Let's go." So he got into a little bit of a routine. Uh, he wanted to eat upstairs, and another fun thing. Al Pacino gave us a rider with all kinds of specialty fishes and vegetables that he wanted to eat. When he saw our lasagna, that his team was eating, he wanted to eat the lasagna instead of all the other things. And so after the event, we shipped him some of my, our Mama Yolanda's homemade lasagna to New York City. I heard that. Yeah. Now, didn't one of you or some of you go and oh, have we lunch did. with him as well? In, in December, we, uh, we brought him to, uh, or we went to, he was playing the Merchant of Venice on Broadway. So we actually brought some lasagna to, uh, to him in New York as well. Well, that's yeah. great. 
Well, PJ, any political ambitions uh, on your part? You know what? I'm too invested in, uh, in in the family business right now to to seriously consider that. I mean, obviously, it's it's something that I that I have considered, but in the short term, in the meantime, I'm committed to growing Carmen's to to a new level and bringing it to a new level. I mean, we just invested in that new hotel, so I'm committed. I signed on the dotted line for All that right. mortgage, so I got to make sure that, right. that that mortgage is paid off. PJ, before the I operative things. words are right now. Well, congratulations on everything you're thank doing, you. and thank you for what you're doing for thank our you, city. Larry. We have been in conversation with PJ Mercanti of the Mercanti Group, and he is one of Hamilton's young entrepreneurs. Thank you for watching Hamilton Talks. Next week, come back because on, at this time, we're going to be talking with another mover and shaker in the city of Hamilton. Thanks for watching.